what has happened is that we, it's okay, it's almost a term of endearment. That's right. Okay, and, and we understand it, but then when it goes outside of the race, yeah. and it said, yeah. then it's like, oh really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I was saying to Keegan, so. when I'm not singing this, the white person, they'll kill you. No, that said, the person who said, the, who inspired the song is dead. Yeah. So if you want to talk to him, I'll take you to the cemetery. Right. Right. Did you look into why that behavior was in that way? That you're, you're stereotyping, you say they behave in this manner. That's right. Mm -hmm. There's an action that created it to be that way. So why are, you, why are you not looking at the point of where what inspired it that like poor people, it's economics. Okay? That's right. These people have a certain behavior pattern because of what? No, the, you see, what, what, this is the, the song that speaks yeah, I want to, to, to uh, perception. Correct. But sometimes perception are wrong. Mm -hmm. Because I see you, and I don't see you. And you believe you are human, but I don't see a human being. I see an animal. I see somebody who is going to, uh, when I'm applying for a loan, and I belong to this certain class, the law will not be granted. Because just people believe that something will go wrong, or the papers are, are not getting. So we go to the origins of ancestry of the problem. Some will say it's slavery. Some will say it's uh, colonialism. Some will say it's many things. Then when you talk to the person, why are you late? Don't blame colonialists because they are not they are not the ones you if I say one o'clock, then it means if it takes you one hour to come here, you must start at twelve o'clock. Yeah. But some of us who, who, who only know it's one o'clock at five to one. Yeah. Yeah. But let's use people like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King. Yeah. yeah. They started when it, they started when it's all at one o'clock, but they couldn't get to one o'clock, they had to start at three o'clock. That's right. right. To get back. So, so that, that Martin Luther King lived right. in his life. Now we're saying, what is our life? Like, if, if these guys are talented, on the 19th, she's got something. And the, even now, I'm sending to some of the people who matter, and they've listened to the song, and said, I can, no, wait, this is good. So if there's a connection, then there's value. Then from there, if you're organized, then it means you've got something. But imagine you are coming here and you want to compete with the world and you're just a, 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 a one person talking about, you, about yourself, talking about lyrics, talking about the conversation. You enrich it even by talking about here. Because that song is a difficult song, as you are saying. We go to the ancestry of the problem, and you may say, okay, let's go and dig all the bad things that white people did. Then I have to look at the next meal. Whatever I've, I've, I've mastered of the past wrong, I still have to figure out how to, eat, how to get the next meal. It is that next step that we go here. If we can focus on the next step, then it means here, yeah, these guys can have a living out of a song. They can have a living out of radio. They can have a living out of television. But it requires effort. So that's what we're saying in this. This next step, because we spend, we spend a lot of time talking about what white people have done to us, but not talk, talking about what they do for each other. And, and then what you are saying, no legal business. If you, even if you come up with your stories, at the end of the day, what, what are you asking for? Right. What is it that you want me to do? Because well, I, I, I will not be... And I'll give, I'll give you an example. One of my um, nieces yeah. came to me, and she is having to, to situation so I'm going to tie together. She had some, she had some problems on the job, and, and, and she just felt like she was not being paid. She got equal, certainly more experience than some of um, her 
white peers around yeah. her. And um, and she felt like that they were they were all being paid more. And then she just said, you know, you know, my boss who needs to go, who needs to go. I said, okay, so why does he need to go? And so I was on the phone before sometime I didn't get a clear, concise answer. Yeah. So I told her, I said, you need to think about this because I can try to move this forward, but I need something to, to work move forward, forward and, and understand. Okay. And so I said, okay. Then we moved to one of my other nieces who has a teaching. She just graduated with a degree in education and she wants to teach. And in the state, you have that this certification that goes along with it. And so she went to school in one state and then um, is teaching in another and they're not accepting this state certification. So I'm just saying, okay, so all right, so you know that, but did, but did you know that when you were going through the program? Well, I did. I talked to some people and I told them what I was doing, but where is it in writing? Well, they didn't give it to me in writing because I told them I would be graduating, but I'd have a certification in this state but I would be teaching in this state. I said, okay. So she she just went on and you know the people at the school are having a problem with me. They I could get it if I do my work and my regular day's work. But what do you want? That's it. No nigga business. <laughs> what do you want? Yeah. You know. Well, at the end of the day, she wanted me to pay for her to get the certification That's right. to, so she can be certified the next day to teach. Well, it does, it's not going to take us three days to talk about that. Tell me, yeah. what do you want? That's all. You know, if you, can you pay me back? Yeah. But are you, do you want is me to look Is it charity? For, is it charity? Do you want me to look for scholarships? <laughs> and, and so my point to you all, young people, though, is get to the point with the ask. Quickly. The ASK, and, you know. Yeah. And, and have a plan behind it. Mm -hmm. I need your hope here. Yeah. This is what I have done. Yeah. And if I get this help, this will get me to this point. Because otherwise, people start to say, really? No, the attention's funny. That, right. Yeah, attention. Well, and then the other part of it, and I, I would just say this, love, love, love my family to death, but I am not Bank America. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so they, well, you know, I need this. So if I can't give it, I'm not going to loan it. Because I'm not going to like you if you don't pay me back. Thank you for loaning it. Absolutely. Net back. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so that's the, so that's the, the yeah. song that we want yeah. to be able to, to, come, to come up with, which speaks to the next step. Yeah. And, and, and the, it's got to be. The next question. But, that, uh, but the connotation. The connotation. We got was, that word right. <laughs> yeah, we have to be very, very careful. Very yeah. careful. Right. So that's what we're, we're, we're politically correct. That's what we're trying. <laughs> that's exactly right. Oh, so it's got a kind of thing. Yeah, it, 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 it's <laughs> it just to have a. No. Uh, yeah. Because every culture yeah. has <laughs> the same thing yeah. that's going on. So you. Hey, my boy. I know. Yeah, I, I, yeah. We've met, we've met, and we are not talking the same language. Hi, how are you guys? My name is Salah. I'm from Northern Cape, yeah. the province. <laughs> I'm I'm like for the Department of Environmental Affairs. Our colleague. <laughs> Previously, I was at Mutuni FM and then joined Hillborough Radio connecting me to 1872. I've done communications and dealing also with exhibitions, external communication, traveling uh, across the country, exhibiting, sharing information with what is happening uh, across the country. May it be in the event depend on what we are talking about. It might be climate change and air quality biodiversity, uh, chemical waste management, and so forth. And each and every day, I have to be on daily basis on our website, you know, so that 
these things are sometimes uh, technical. So I know sometimes when you are doing an event where you are talking to the students, they would ambush you with signs, Googling, just trying to check that are you informed with what is happening around you. So basically, yeah, that's me. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Organized conversation and aid to 
the solutions that are possible in South Africa, because it's a real thing. There are people who are emotional about it. There are people who believe in equity. There are people who believe in economic freedom. As long as they're not paying for it, it's free. But the moment you say pay for it, then it's a different conversation. So I think the, the interest of finishing this, then we will be able to say education uh, is one of the issues that ought to bring people together. Whether you're black or white, uh, still someone has to pay. Who so, is that person who okay. has to pay? Who has to pay? And if we can agree that there's an idiot out there who will give up privilege to allow you to go to school, let's go to that address quickly. <laughs> Make sure we lock that person in and say, can you work hard so that other people can have the prospects of a better life. So those are the choices we make. No government will pay that which is not collected yeah. or somebody is paying. So the government is neutral in all this conversation. Yeah. But students want the government not to be neutral. Yeah. They want the government to exist so that it can then penalize other people, so that other people can find an elevator to life and say, life is so easy. I'll press floor number five. Then I'll get there quickly. So that conversation is a continuing one. It's a it really is. It's a continuing one in you know not understanding your whole system here. Um, you know there are several different models yeah. that could possibly be replicated that are in the states. It's not it's not three in the states. They're pushing for two year institutions to be free. But even that, there's infrastructure and things of that nature and. Um, so I think the government, if they're collecting taxes for that, somebody's, it's got to come from somebody's pocket to, to pay for it because who's going to turn the lights on? You know, if, if it's all free, where does the cost that has to be covered to maintain, let's just take the simple thing as the lights. Who, who, pays, who pays for that? Do we tax somebody else to pay for that? Um, uh, has the government collected enough money to pay for that? Do we take a vote and say that everybody um, that's working, there's going to be a dollar that should be taxed and that's going to free education? Then will that cover all the people that want to go for free? So it's, um, and I think to, to some extent, you know, people look at, you know, there's, you know, serving big government and doing a lot of different things and a lot of different money. I mean, I'll just take an example. When my daughter first started working, she said, okay, I'm working 10 hours a week. Um, I get $20 an hour, US dollars. Y'all can convert that for me. So that means at the end of the week, I'm getting $200. And then she got her check, and that's not what it said. It was a list of taxes and FICA, which is an acronym for some taxes and stuff that we had. She was sick, pissed, more like it, because she had spent the $200 in, the head. in her head. She had already spent it. And she's like, well, who is FICA? I don't know them, and why are they taking my money? You follow me? And I'm thinking, well, oh, these are, you know, when you work, you pay state taxes, and then you pay federal taxes in the U.S., and then in cases you also pay local taxes. So all these people have pitched, as she said, none of them went to work for me. But those dollars are used to take in different services and things of that nature. So now you've got, let's say you add to that list, and you say, okay, a dollar from whatever you make, that we is now going towards education. While she may like that and think that's great, but they, who is FICA? They took, you know, whatever percent it was from the money that she had made. She thought, I worked 10 hours, they told me they were giving me 20 US dollars an hour, okay, and so I should get $200. But, 
it doesn't work that way and for her. And so, you know, and I had to explain it because it was her first job. You know, this is very early on. You know, now like she was 16 years old and um, I worked a part time. But then that now that she's gotten older, she's paying more attention. And she gets a little bothered by when I start to tell her that these federal and state dollars and local dollars are going for all of these different services to pay for some people that need this or need that. And she said, oh, that's nice. Do they have a job? <laughs> you know, because then they can help and they can start paying for part of this. I mean, it just, it just think about it. It's like, well, they need some skills. Well, how do we get them some skills so they can go to work? because now it's real for her. And I use that as a very elementary kind of example because sometimes you, 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 you kind of don't see what picture. happens, the big picture from that standpoint. But that made me have to break down to her the whole tax structure in the US. And, and so, she, oh, okay. I said, well, don't you want to help people? I do, Mommy, I do want to help people, but I want them to help themselves, too. Because she was like, because I need to take all of this home, or at least the more of it, you know, home. Because I worked for it. Because I worked for it. And she's got cousins who she sees that are her age, that are on public assistance, and they are able-bodied in the nightclub, Dropping it like it's hot. <laughs> and get, spinning. Yeah. Okay, spinning <laughs> and getting checks <laughs> that's coming out of her tax dollars. It became a reality. Like, oh, wait a minute. So she always just like, I don't even want to go out with you. Because <laughs> now I'm buying your drinks in the club and then I'm paying for you all month. I mean, it, it was kind of an interesting reality check. But I did tell her that there's some people that we need to really help and give a helping hand. So don't get me wrong, she's a very compassionate person. She was the person that she saw a stray dog on the street and she wanted to take him home. She is the young lady that our holiday of Thanksgiving, she's packing up plates to go to homeless shelters and, and homeless people on the street. So she's very, very compassionate. But then it became a reality for her when she was working every day. And then she had some real life, you know, examples. And so she started talking to her cousins, who was her, they're her peers, and saying, why aren't you working? You can go out and work. Girl, why I gotta work when I get a check every month? <laughs> You get that check from who? The federal government. I get some food stamps. I got some medical assistance. Really? And I'm in public housing. And I put, you know, and this is what they're doing, right? You know how they do. <laughs> and she is like, wait a minute. I just ran away from the stomach. So I'm really taking care of you. No, we ain't going out no more. <laughs> End of story. Okay. Good question. Thank you, everyone. Hi, how are you? I'm so thanks for being here. My name is Kanisa Yengwa from Eastern Cape. Like now I'm based here in Jobek. I'm working here. I'm a teacher. Oh, my profession. Yeah. Teacher to all professions possible. Um, working as a facilitator for the Cup and the Cup State of Oh, okay, good. Yes. Oh, that's good. I don't have a question for you, but um, get that I'm spending my evening with you today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. yes. Hello. Hello. <laughs> my name is Asita Hennings. Um, I'm Finnish Iranian. Uh, I'm an artist, I'm a painter, and uh, I'm a graphic designer, and I'm a diner also. So, you're just guest of the Western World tonight, and welcome. Thank you. <laughs> nice to meet you. You too. So, just enjoy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Hi, I'm the other half. Yeah. <laughs> 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 My name is Wayne Hemmings. 
I am a diplomat, not a businessman. <laughs> so I don't have any business entrepreneurship. No. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Where is the other food? <laughs> <laughs> However, as my wife said, we're a guest of Warri. And um, I must say, um, South Africa is very near and dear to me because I've served here under uh, two different times. I served in the classical development with USAID and um, kind of did a lot of infrastructure with your townships and getting all this electrical stuff worked out because you had millions connected to one phase of electrical here in the townships and no sanitary. Now they have sanitary bathrooms along. That's one part of my uh, inspiration and development that I did while I was here. Um, I came back in a second phase where I actually was living in Cape Town as the counselor for management affairs for the United States government and the American Embassy in, um, in Cape Town, the consulate, the embassy in Pretoria. Anyway, in that capacity, um, I've been here twice. And um, last year I came and uh, when the 1873 was just on the launch and uh, well, a, a little before, yeah. it was launched a little before, but I came to where you had a the police, yeah. the police, huge uh, concert and exposure. Yes, and they sing. Yes, yes, I remember <laughs> quite. <well. laughs> and we're here again visiting, and um, it's near and dear to our heart. Presently, at this time, we're presently living in Abidjan, Cote d'Ivoire. So I'm still on the African continent. And just to give you a history of my um, love for the continent, I'm Jamaican American by birth. And um, my love for the continent, I've served in Ghana, Uganda, Nigeria, South Africa, Bambi, uh, which is Central African Republic, and now in Cote d'Ivoire. And I think our next assignment will still be in Africa, even though I've done some European tours in uh, LCP, uh, London, and other places. But the majority of my tours are in Africa because I feel near and near and see the development of and um, my love for the continent started many, many years ago to know that this would be uh, the pinnacle of holding the world together in terms of everybody's focusing on Africa now because they see this as the new rising star of where things will work in terms of that. So to, to get to your question, as I said, I'm, I'm a diplomat, not a businessman, but, <laughs> but um, in terms of um, your developments and you talking about um, getting your music here, well, where's your drama? He left. No, he's but anyway, to pattern his things, these are things that you can always find out how to do it because you just don't want a pattern just for South Africa. You want a, a worldwide pattern. Yeah. Well, these things cost. And by these things costing, you have programs that are running in terms of we have the public affairs office here, which was formed, if many of you may know, as US, US, USIS, United States yeah. Information Services, is now called Public Affairs Office, mm -hmm. which can give you a lot of information. And we have foreign commercial services that you can get help from. Even in liaison with uh, Houston, they're a good arm to get to the embassy to get that, because all these programs can go through. You can have programs in there, you can have a liaison created somewhere, but you need an arm of how you get to the program and how to utilize the program. So, as I said, um, I'm really, uh, I must commend you also for sticking through in, in your belief of the 1873 because I know when you talked how strong you are about it mm -hmm. and passionate and the passion still continues. I came back a year later and the passion is still there. And um, you know, it's good when you have uh, uh, mentors and colleagues who believe in your cause. And um, you have to really support, focus, and you know, things may be difficult at times, but you know what? Never give up. Keep pushing at it. It may not happen the first time, but keep going. You know, I always use an example, as I said, I'll repeat again, I'm a diplomat, not a businessman. But <laughs> anyway, 
The company is seven now. Mm -hmm. How many times it got to before it got to that name? Yeah. It was one up, two up, three up. It was always a failure. Yeah. Until it got to seven. Seven up was the hit name mm -hmm. that they made it go through. So you may have failures along the way, but just keep motivated, keep strength, and keep moving along. And I see where you're focused on that to keep going. And I commend you for that also. Not because he's my friend or I'm a guest. I will challenge him on many things he'll tell me. <laughs> okay? But um, just keep the focus, keep going. And I'm, I'm really, um, I, I see you, you know, I heard you sing and everything. I hear everything and you're still passionate about it. And you all ask very articulate questions. Not only questions in terms of a personal feeling. I can feel the energy of the personal connection you're making in terms of moving forward. And I just want to commend you that I'm sitting here a year later, seeing that it's still moving along. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just get it? Yeah. Just in the kitchen. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a different man, not a businessman. It's always it's always difficult to, to follow eloquent people. Yeah. <laughs> and, and when you don't know what the parameters are you know, for your for your introduction. Mm -hmm. uh, and the same thing obviously I want to first apologize for Mr. Mawere for my my late coming. I was told by a family emergency uh, as a result uh, we ended up coming late. Now, some of us have compartmentalized lives. So you need to choose and decide which part do you pick to, to, to put on the table. Needless to say that Bawari is my mentor, he's a friend of over uh, 15 years and we met in New York and uh, the whole road between then and now has happened and we continue, we continue to be a mentor and an advisor. Uh, I know I missed a lot, Stephanie, also uh, our apologies for being late, but my name is Kennedy Kalumbale, originally from, from Victoria. I spent a lot of time in in the States, 27 years. So I'm intimately familiar with that part of the world. So there, there's a, uh, there was an immediate attraction and interest when my will extended the invitation uh, that you were coming and not withstanding all the wonderful and, and impactful things that you have done and continue to do for, for our people.